Does enclomiphene increase sperm count? Sperm and fertility levels are dropping worldwide, and actually it's more so in industrialized countries like the UK, the United States. That's where we're seeing the biggest drop, and this can be devastating, especially if you're starting to want to have kids and to have a family, and I know it can be uh, psychologically devastating and it can pull couples apart. And so in this video, what my goal is to share with you not only some good news that enclomiphene can help increase a sperm count, but I'm also going to share with you some of the other natural things and some of the foundational lifestyle pieces that you wanna to put together so that you can have all the babies that you could ever dream of. All right, I don't know how many you're dreaming of, but hopefully you wanna have a, a few kids because it's the next generation and we gotta have more babies. So let's jump in. So I'm Reagan Archibald, founder of Ageless Future. And I make these videos because I wanna give you some information that allows you to sort out the signal through the noise. There's a lot of noise out there around health. And so I want this to be a community where we can learn from each other. And I love the comments that you provide. We do our best to get to those comments. And so if you love the channel, please subscribe. It does help us help more people. And then if you have great insights or any videos that you wanna see, let us know. But this is one that came in and the couple who is experiencing this, you know, they've tried all kinds of fertility treatments, but they just could not conceive. So the couple who came in, they'd done IVF twice. And in both times, the IVF didn't take. And you know they were able to retrieve the healthiest eggs and they had healthy sperm, generally speaking. And so I said, let's try a different method before we go down the IVF route again, because there are some side effects from it. Not only is it disruptive uh, hormonally, uh, especially for the mother, but it also is very expensive. And at the root of it all, there's ways that you can actually have more predictable outcomes when your body's healthy. And that doesn't matter if you decide to do IVF or not. The foundational piece is let's get your body as healthy as possible. We can prime the reproductive system so you have all the chances possible to conceive naturally. Now, one of my friends, uh, Stephen Palter, he has some of the most successful outcomes in IVF treatments. And so if you do need it, go see Dr. Palter. He's in New York. He's got a phenomenal following on TikTok and he's just a genius doctor. But outside of that, if you wanna go naturally, if you're like, what does enclomiphene do? Well, here's the good news. So enclomiphene, it does work on the Leydig cells. And these Leydig cells are in the testes and they stimulate testosterone and sperm through this hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis or the HPG axis. And this HPG axis, it gets disrupted in so many people based on lifestyles that we had in our past. And so even if today you're like, all right, I'm cleaning up, but you've had 10 years of exposing yourself to alcohol, drugs, uh, cigarettes, sedentary lifestyle, too much Netflix, too much pizza, all these things start to diminish our sperm count. And then you confound that with uh, some of the research that we're finding on whole, putting your cell phone in your front pocket, the chances of us being able to continue to exist as a species is threatened. I say that in all seriousness because I think this is one of the biggest and most devastating problems, not just for your community and your family, but for society at large. So the way that enclomiphene is considered a CIRM or a selective estrogen receptor modulator. And so what that means is it does have this ability to activate luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone, which then triggers the spermatogenesis in the testes. And this is actually a really important mechanism and the communication gets lost when you have what are called endocrine disruptors. So some of the reasons why you may struggle to have really healthy sperm, number one, if you're on testosterone, testosterone turns off your body's own production of sperm because testosterone instantly, if you have exogenous testosterone, it lowers your LH and FSH. And these are the two really important pathways that your pituitary, these signals, these stimulating hormone pathways, when they're not active, 
then your testes go dormant. And that's where you can get what's called hypogonadism, where you can literally have um, shrinkage in the testes when you're on testosterone. So first thing you want to do is if that's you, then you're going to want to get off testosterone, but that can have devastating side effects. And so this is where enclomiphene can be a nice bridge so that you can continue making great sperm. So the luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone, they are responsible for the creation and formation of sperm. That's called spermatogenesis. And if you remember Genesis from the Bible, that's the beginning and that's the newness. You're not going to see when using enclomiphene a suppression of testosterone. Actually, on the flip side, we've seen testosterone levels from men who come in and their testosterone is like 300 and we see it jump up to seven, eight, even 900. So we see a massive increase. That's your body's own production of testosterone. So uh, here's a study, and this study was done in 2013 in the United States. And what the title of the study is, Oral and Clomiphene Citrate Stimulates the Endogenous Production of Testosterone and Sperm Counts in Men with Low Testosterone. And so what was done is this was men with secondary hypogonadism, and the hypogonadism is when your Leydig cells just aren't producing the sperm and the testosterone in the way that you want. And so these men were randomized to receive either the enclomiphene or topical testosterone gel for six months, and they wanted to do a comparison. And the researchers, they tracked LH, FSH, testosterone, and sperm concentration. And what they found at the end of this six-month trial is they found that enclomiphene significantly increased testosterone. It increased luteinizing hormone, or LH, and FSH, follicular stimulating hormone, and sperm counts went up. While the testosterone gel, you had an increase of testosterone, but you had a suppression of LH, FSH, and sperm counts. So the study concluded that the enclomiphene does have the ability to protect levels of testosterone and increase it, while also improving and increasing sperm count through the LH and FSH pathways. So if, if you're someone who's considering getting on it, the typical dose is 25 milligrams daily. And in some cases, you can start with 12.5 milligrams. Make sure you're working through blood labs. Make sure you have the right data. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, interested in fertility, you're working with a specialist. But in clomiphene, the nice thing about it is this non-testosterone therapy, what it does is it helps with this connection between the brain and the testes, or that HPG axis. And that seems to be the most important. The things that disrupt that communication is it's a feedback loop. And so when you have what are called endocrine mimicry or endocrine disruptors, these are things that you want to get rid of as quickly as possible so that that signaling is proper. This is where I love peptides because all peptides are is they're not drugs that are overriding your body's natural responses. All they're doing is cleaning up the signaling so that your cells can start to communicate again. It's a safe alternative to TRT. In many times, we encourage our clients, even if they want to get on testosterone, we say, well, why don't we try something natural before you start on it? Because once you get started, Started, is something you want to stay on long term once you start on testosterone. Whereas in clomiphene, we've seen in a lot of cases, as we get your body healthier, now your body's able to make testosterone on its own again just by clearing out those interferences. So where do we get the interferences from these endocrine disruptors is, is the term the EPA uses. So endocrine disruptors, known endocrine disruptors, are found in phthalates. So the plastics that are everywhere are big endocrine disruptors. The BPA, many of us know, like you want BPA free products because a lot of us were drinking fluids out of plastic bottles all the time. And if they're exposed to heat, you're gonna have a much greater level of these toxins that get released into whatever the substance is you're drinking. The other endocrine disruptors happen through heavy metals. So if you smoke cigarettes, the cadmium and the lead, those are massive contributors. The other thing you have to be careful of is some of the protein drinks. These protein shakes, a lot of times the chocolate flavor, the vanilla, you're gonna get a lot of cadmium and a lot of lead just from having these flavors in there. If you eat a lot of chocolate, chocolate does seem to have a decent amount of lead, so be careful with that. The other thing you wanna do is eat cruciferous vegetables. So how do you flush these toxins out? Well, there's a molecule called DIM, and DIM can flush out all those interferences when it comes to healthy sperm and healthy testosterone. We've also found that if you're sedentary, if you're not exercising, just 
by putting uh, some weight, put it in front of your body, do a hack squat. You can do back squats if you're younger. That compressive load can be more challenging for those of you who have back issues. But just by working the big muscles in your legs, you'll see an increase in testosterone. Another study that I found fascinating that Dr. Stitch, our medical director, shared on one of the videos that we've done in the past, what they found in the research is they took men who all had low levels of testosterone, and uh, you'd assume they probably, if they have low levels of testosterone, the sperm count will be lower as well. They typically go hand in hand, but not always. And what they found is they took these men, they sent them out to the woods for two weeks, and all they did is they chopped down trees and made firewood. So they just piled up logs and firewood and they camped. And when they came back, the average man had a two to three fold increase in testosterone just by going in the woods. So that's another option. The other natural way you can increase the sperm count and fertility is making sure you have adequate levels of zinc, adequate levels of boron, adequate levels of selenium, and omega-3s. And then generally speaking, if you have any nutrient deficiencies, the reproductive system is the first thing our body gets rid of if our body is under stress. So make sure you have mindfulness activities, get rid of alcohol, make sure you do the 30-30 protocol, get out in the sun right as the sun's rising that first 30 minutes of the day, and then as the sun's setting, get out in the sun again. Try to spend two hours outside will dramatically increase these levels. And then get to bed by 9.30. It's that the hours before midnight is when you get growth hormone. Your body's gonna get rid of all that stress. You're gonna feel young and vibrant. So have close relationships, lots of hugs, increases oxytocin, which increases nitric oxide, which improves blood flow, which the testes need blood flow if you want the testosterone levels. And then make sure you're not sitting for long periods of time. It's really damaging to the body. So get the sit-stand desk. All these things can be really helpful. And in clomiphene, once you've cleared out all the interferences, the clomiphene is a great therapy that can increase testosterone, increase sperm count, and help you to have family. Have the family that you want, but make sure you have the lifestyle in place because I think health is more contagious than disease. And so it's the principles that you teach your kids and then your kids are going to teach their kids. And by the way, women, it's not what your mother ate. It was what your grandmother ate that impacts your fertility level and the health of your ovaries and the health of your eggs. Just remember that you're impacting several generations into the future. So I'm Reagan Archibald. I make these videos because I want you to have the optimal health so that you can live the life you want. Having healthy sperm is a big part of that if having a family is in your future. So if you love this video and you wanna go deeper and get blood labs, go to agelessfuture.com. That's where it all starts. And we can look at all the hormone pathways and help you optimize your chances of conception, having great sperm count and having a great life. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.